Bored Ape NFT game is an absolute joke. Bored Ape Yacht Club, one of mankind's dumbest inventions so far uh this is an nft brand that gained a lot of traction after celebrities endorsing oh, after yeah. nfts sky and, and by the way the celebrity endorsements this was a paid endorsement in a lot of cases okay for a bit before they plummeted and there was this hype train this gold rush going on for a bit that has kind of waned but you know they're Bros who are still hanging on. You got situations like these, which are really funny. Somebody highlighted how funny it is to watch NFT bros learn about screenshots and how they feel like when somebody right clicks and saves their NFT images, it's like stealing. So right here, the best part about it, uh, the best part about it is like a lot of people are joking about the screenshotting, but there are people that take it seriously. I got the same one, said this to the user in response oh, here's to what he said. He Kingle's is mad. Uh, NFT monkey here. And <laughs> the response received here is, dude, I own this NFT. Do you really think you can get away with theft when you're showing what you stole from me directly to yes. my face? My lawyers will make it an easy job of this case. Prepare to say goodbye to your luscious life and start preparing for the streets. I will ruin you. You know Oh my god, who are these people, man? It's crazy. Oh, how much I sacrifice! Acting like downloading a JPEG from the image is the same as trespassing and theft. Yeah. And it's just the fact that these NFT bros don't understand what they're it's actually buying. You're not is. buying the image. You're buying the receipt that links to the image. There's also very little legal precedence for this stuff, not to mention the law will never say that downloading a JPEG from the internet is illegal. And what you paid money for was, in fact, the NFT, which is not the image itself, just the thing that says you own the image. And you know, you're the one yeah. taking its word for it, so good for you, I guess. But for the rest of us, We'll just download the JPEGs how we feel like it. It's the internet, man. You've got other NFT bros saying things like, you think it's funny to take screenshots? Well, there's also like the, uh, the element of, like, is this what society wants their money to be spent on? D does, do the average population, do the average voters want to make laws and arbitrate people screenshotting monkeys on Twitter? I don't think anybody gives a fuck about this. It doesn't matter like what they think is like, oh, this isn't fair. This is fair. Nobody cares. Of people's NFTs, huh? Property theft is a joke to you? This reads like a Dwight Schrute tweet. Uh -huh. I'll have you know that the blockchain doesn't lie. I own, I it. own it. Even if you save it, it's my property. You're mad that you don't own the art that I own, says mad NFT bro. Delete that screenshot. Oh. Millions of families suffer every year. It's dumb enough on its own Jesus. to engage with the NFT landscape at all, but the fact that they don't even know what no they're doing. No way that isn't a copy pasta. The thing is, like, half of them are and half of them aren't into just makes us all the more laughable. Some NFT bros are calling for the disabling of right-click saves, a basic computing function they want completely removed. Oh, so Instagram does this too. Let me give you guys a little bit of a tip. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, I want to show you guys this real quick. Because uh, um, a lot of people don't know how to save images off of Instagram. And I just want to show you guys real quick how it works. Okay. Let me make sure that I open up Instagram off stream. Okay. So uh, what you have to do is in order to do this, you have to go over to uh, right here and you click on, you right click and you uh, inspect element. And then you have to go over to, is it console? It might be storage. Uh, yep, it's right there. Okay. And let me just find it real quick. And I'll show you guys exactly how to do this. I actually usually do this on Chrome. So, yeah, let me do it on Chrome just to make it easier for myself, okay? Uh, I apologize. Yeah, I, I, I haven't done this before on, on Firefox. Okay, let's try this. I'm going to open up somebody's Instagram. Instagram, okay. And I'm probably not even logged in. No, I'm not even logged in. Okay, so what you want to do is you can go over and you just click on this right here. And then you open it up in another tab. You go to right click um, inspect and you can inspect element, go to sources, then go over to here to content. 
and you have to go through these different folders here and sometimes you can find it very quickly it's not the same exact time same exact thing every single time but then you can open the image in a new tab and right there you're able to do that and then you can save the image and it's no problem so that's how you do it just in case anybody doesn't know that SNP is not source quality? Exactly. So like the reason why you would want to do that is so you can get the source quality version of the image rather than just a uh, print screen screenshot. And now also keep in mind that sometimes it's not in that specific folder. Sometimes it's in other folders below that. So you can go through the multiple folders and then find it that way. just because they really want to feel like they own their JPEGs and didn't waste money on that crap. Here's a response yeah. that reads, the NFT space needs this if we ever hope to survive. Hey, good luck surviving. Here's one more dumb NFT bro tweet just for good measure. Here's somebody who spent $225,000 on an NFT and is mad that people bro, are- Bro, this is so dumb. People are stealing my punk that I paid 225k for and using it as their profile how is this legal this is stressing me out not gonna lie lamau honestly man if you feel empowered it's like this is he because this at this point he's lost right because he got so many responses he's beaten down if you feel empowered stealing other people's property go for it it's whatever yeah this is straight up stages of grief yeah are stealing the jpeg which again is not what he actually oh, owns the God. nft is not the jpeg stressing me out not gonna lie on well, to be fair actually on, on this point this point is not entirely complete because inside of the board apes eula and ownership policy purchasing and owning the nft on the blockchain is equivalent to owning all of the copyright of the nft including copyright and usage of the nft and whatever you choose to use it in so in the case of board apes i don't know about every single other nft collection owning the board ape on the uh on the blockchain is functionally the same as owning the board ape in terms of copyright so if you if you actually look up what they say, that is what they say. Honestly, man, if you feel empowered stealing other people's property, sure. go like, for it. Saying. It's whatever. I don't care. I don't care at all. So yeah, this that. is the kind of Nobody's idiocy that, that this landscape That's attracts. Just and shit just got way dumber with an NFT game that is being developed surrounding the Bored Ape Yacht Club IP. Okay, so which we have is kind a of the Bored Ape Yacht Club video game. Here we go, guys. Who's excited? Main subject of this video, there's this video that was uploaded. I'm a little late with this. This was uploaded a month ago, titled Board Ape Yacht Club's Next Chapter. And, you know, at first. <laughs> all right, look at, the, look at the comment. Congrats on all your carefully researched investments, NFT bros. Your reward is a game where you chase shit. Kudos to developers for being honest that the people suckered into this game are getting screwed and playing literal shit. Old Board Ape Yacht Club's next chapter, and you know, at first in the intro they talk about all of the accomplishments, all the cool stuff oh, yeah. that's happened. Cool stuff, I quote it's that. Lit. That's happened surrounding Board Ape it's lit. Yacht Club, like the Metaverse trailer that they released, and you oh, know, got God. some celebrity endorsements. Freaking Jimmy Fallon put it on a show at one yeah. point and stuff like that. But what they Which, don't, by address the way, is one of the most cringe segments that I've ever seen. Like I've seen a lot of really bad sponsors, like. The Jimmy Fallon Board Apes NFT wasn't out with Ariana Grande. Oh my God. Like, that's the kind of stuff that, like, after you get done watching it, you want to bury your head in the dirt. Are situations like scams, things like Paris, Seth Paris Green, Excuse and me. how his Board Ape Yacht Club NFT got stolen, and he wanted to make a show out of it, but the rights carry yeah. with it. So, and, and by the way, was I right? about Seth Green getting his NFT stolen as being the turning point for whenever people think NFTs aren't serious anymore. Was I right about that? Because I think I absolutely fucking was. You had to like pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it back. 
essentially had to pay a ransom. And now here comes yes. next generation stupidity in the form of this NFT game that is essentially just another major grift. Let's check this out. I'll break it down as the trailer goes along because right. Thank God. some of the stuff that they talk about here doesn't even sound like English. Here we go. Which all leads us to the trial of Jimmy the monkey. It all started with Jimmy. And I will say, it is a bit of a waste that what is good artwork is being wasted on such a crappy venture. Yeah. It all started when Jimmy took a shit so atomic, he ripped a damn hole in the space-time continuum. Pretty dumb plot. I don't think it's a dumb plot at all. Because you have to think, a lot of the people that are buying these types of things, the pinnacle, pin-ultimate, like, master class in humor is taking a shit. It doesn't get funnier than that, guys. Yeah, that's that's whenever things get really funny. Okay. The key from another universe, but instead of opening it, they partied. And now the key is inconvenient. I will have to say that I like the art style. Unironically, I agree with Young. I I really do. I think this is great. Immediately stuck inside it looks Jimmy's good. back door. His uh wazoo. Chocolate pocket. Uh, it's his butthole. Now it's up to us to open that box. We gotta take the long way around to get the key. So like you poop the key and you gotta go okay. find the key. So that's like Do the premise. Dash. Starting January 17th, okay. each ape and mutant can claim a sewer pass that grants access to the Are mutants like uh, is that like a, a secondary NFT uh like it is a secondary NFT community for people that are too poor to buy board apes? That's like the underclass? It's like the people, it's like you have like the kids that whose parents love them enough to buy Legos and those are Board Ape Yacht Club. And then you also had the kids whose like parents didn't really give a shit about them. So they had Mega Bloks and that's the Mutant Ape Club. Yeah, second class citizens. Yeah, okay. So these are the Mega Bloks of NFTs. Bowels of the Yacht Club. Okay, so uh, you, the way you claim a pass, which you need to play this game is yeah, by own owning yeah. a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT, one of the stupid monkeys, animals, whatever. And there are different tiers. And the higher tier, the more of a boost you'll get to your score when you're playing the game, which ties into the ultimate goal of this game, which is extremely vague. You're not really sure what you're paying for with this game. I'll get to that in a bit. But yes, there are... I'm pretty sure you're paying for the same thing that you were paying for whenever you bought the NFT. Passes involved in all this stuff that involves NFT shenanigans. Now, you can also get a pass without the NFT, but you have to buy it off of someone, buy it off as an NFT. So people can choose to, those who already own Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs, they can choose to get a pass and then essentially sell that off and make money that okay. way. It's And it goes for like thousands of dollars when you look at the Ethereum cost of these passes. Wow. I'll get to that in a bit as well. For a skill-based mint called Dookie Dash, so January 18th is the day that the video game itself, Dookie Dash, will come out. You'll be able to claim one sewer pass for Board Ape or Mutant Ape you own, and there uh -huh. are special tiers if you have a doggo to go with. Depending on what you've got, okay. your sewer pass may include a sweet bonus. Well, <sighs> yeah, like, again, it, it almost doesn't sound like... So basically, well, no, no, right here, it's very simple. So if you think about this in terms of... Uh, Okay, so this is Molten Core, right? So uh, this is Molten Core, and you have... Oh, actually, this is Blackwing Lair. Uh, this right here is AQ40. And this is Nax. Yeah, again, this is Valton. This is Vicus. This is Clown. This is Brelshaza. If you understand MMOs, you can understand the way these these things work. Yeah, you understand now? Okay, good. Now it makes sense. Well, yeah, like, again, it, it almost doesn't sound like English. It's just the the kinds of wars that are being strung together for... A I love how status conscious they are and how much they just completely reinforce that, like, literally, if you don't own this tier of Bored Ape, you're, you are literally a tier below other people. You are just inferior. That's it. You're below them. And it's programmed that way on purpose. Venture that is just so freaking useless. 
Well, apes are the only ones who can claim a super pass. Anyone who has a super pass can play, not just apes. You can so yeah, that's what I mean I when I say that you can get the pass without having the monkey NFT by buying the pass off of somebody else who maybe right. want to profit from this whole venture by selling passes as owners of the Boarded Yacht Club NFTs. Maybe I should try to get one of these and play the game. That'd be really funny. There are time limits to all this, so you know it's all about get it now. FOMO, and it's all FOMO, about artificial FOMO, scarcity. you better buy it now. The whole Don't miss yards, out. Hey, yo, you gotta get it now. The classic NFT. You wanna be rich? Buy it now. That's right. And this is the game itself. Okay. If this was a free flash game and I was in 11th grade again, I would play this. I, I would unironically play this. This looks pretty cool. Now, the problem is that it's not a free flash game. It costs $225,000, but... You know, theoretically. It's a pretty basic... Oh, you can buy boosts. I wonder how much that costs. Video Use games, avoid coins. obstacles, collect things, build up points, and those yeah. points, what they are intended for will be explained here. Oh, by the way, also, you can actually pay to win. There are boosters you can buy, so you can double... Step on the gas with this three-in-one pack. The Power Shark Pack. <laughs> oh, your dad. I think at a certain point, scamming these people, just let them do it. Like, they're baiting so hard. Yeah, it's like, just let them do it. It's fine. It's like, but your honor, it was called the Power Shark Pack. And, the honor, you know, judge is like, ah. Oh. That's true. Yeah, they're innocent. It's okay. No, that guy's a complete idiot. He should have never bought that. Too bad. Ash and, you know, there are other bonuses that you can apply by buying items, you know, for real money that will boost aspects of your gameplay and give you a gameplay advantage. So on yeah. top of all the NFT grift stuff, they're implementing pay-to-win microtransactions. Who could have ever expected that? Oh, That's another wow. thing. This is a limited video game. It only lasts for three weeks. You'll be what? paying thousands of dollars worth of Ethereum to essentially get a ticket that will grant you access to a game that will only last oh, three weeks. Oh, this is such a good idea. People used to do this back in the day with gold. Basically, if you so here's how to figure out what the next scam for NFTs are going to be. Go back to the 1800s and see what they made illegal in the 1800s. <laughs> And that's what they're doing. They literally did. They, we already went through this whole thing before. Weeks. And as it'll be explained in the video soon, the whole point is to get the highest score possible before yeah. that time limit ends. And then that player is supposed to get some kind of major reward that surely will revolve around NFTs and you know, monetization elements. Yeah. This is not really a video game. You don't get lost in a fictional setting and just kind of escape into a world where you know there's no real life consequences this is going to have a lot of financial implications it's all about real life because you you're going to become a billionaire pick up, the higher your score the highest score you get across all your runs will be recorded and when the sewer closes the highest score amongst all players gets the key and all eligible sewer passes will prepare for the summoning this su oh that's a proper noun here we go this is a big thing so once the game is over, this three-week limit of playing the game is over, somebody's going to have this high score among yeah. all players, and okay. whoever has that high score will get this thing called the key. And as you'll see throughout this video, the implications of that are never really described. You're supposed to covet this key thing, but they're keeping details vague. Right. So even though you're paying thousands of dollars to access this game, you're not really sure what you're working towards. Just wait two more weeks, guys. And then guys. people who have passes, who are able to access the game, will be confronted with this event called the summoning uh -huh. um, but it's only the top scoring player out of all the players that will get this unique key only one person and here the video explains further your high score in the game is tied to the combination of your wallet and your sewer pass if you give away your pass or it gets moved to another 
wallet, the score does not go with it. Ooh. It's now a new wallet and pass combination. However, if you get that same pass back, as long as it's in the original wallet you played with, your high score will be there. Oh, Passes wow. Passes only have one score tied to them. So when the sewer closes on February 8th, we will be re-verifying every single entry to make sure no one got up to any monkey business. That's so smart. these passes can be transferred over from wallet to wallet, and the higher the score that is attached to a pass, the more valuable, monetarily valuable that NFT pass essentially becomes. That's right. And that's part of the money game that's happening here. That's all part of the economic aspect of artificial scarcity and trying to raise the value of these items so that you know people can have something monetarily valuable that they can either retain in the hopes that it'll increase its value further mm -hmm. or they can sell it off and make money off of it it's like it's really a money game ultimately it's not really a video game it is very much just a financial grift that only few will benefit from as is the case with the whole nft landscape and the crypto oh, yeah, of market also take note when the sewer closes the leaderboard freezes after scores are validated your sewer passes will be eligible for the most exciting part yet okay okay here we go i'm excited i'm ready let's see what are we gonna get Here's where they're going to explain something. Now, they say that, you know, no cheating allowed, and they claim that they have anti-cheating measures no, in place don't. so they can check everything and verify everything. But the NFT landscape and the crypto landscape is so it's rife all about with cheating. scams, and so many of those scams and hacks and heists have been pulled off successfully yeah. that it's impossible to trust the legitimacy of this game and that it'll go smoothly and that... It, everything will go off without a hitch that there'll be no cheating involved that somebody won't be able to cheat the system somehow and get away with it it's like i don't know at this point how people trust this stuff when it's cons the reason why they trust it is because they want to it's that simple it's the same reason why people buy into bullshit religious stuff they want to believe it's true so they do it's that simple it, there's no like that's it. Everything else is like th th everything else is just a justification for that. Consistently proven to be untrustworthy and unsafe, but that's just my take. The summoning. So okay, the summoning here we thing go. is going to happen after the three weeks period. Some dumb lore behind it. Eligible sewer pass to participate in the summoning. It's not really properly That's explained. Today. We'll determine what it reveals. So keep those sewer passes. Oh close my god! Play. The reveal is just the beginning. It's like a raffle where you don't know what your rewards are. It's a game show where you don't know what you're winning or why yeah. you're participating. It's so freaking dumb. It's like if a game show was called, you know, Who Wants to Be a instead of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> Who Wants to Be a Millionaire explains what you're getting if you win the game. You get a million dollars. But this is basically Who Wants to Be a. A what? I don't know. Just play the game and find out. Like, and also, by the way, pay a lot of money to get into the game. Of course. Your power source will be able to evolve through a sequence of various ApeCoin powered mini games as the story continues. These power sources are your key to what comes next. So yeah, they hint at like how these sewer passes will carry over through this. I don't know if you can call it a roadmap or whatever. Evo one, Evo two, Holy the stuff that's shit. happening in the future. But they don't explain what any of this stuff is. No. So you don't really know what these sewer passes are for. You don't know what anything about this game is for. Yeah, but you don't need to because at this point, if you're still invested into this kind of stuff, you're so far off the rocker that anything they tell you, you're just gonna eat it up like crazy. Yeah, anything they say, like, oh my god, I'm gonna make all my other guys, I just gotta do this, gotta do this, gotta do this. I don't even know what the key's gonna do. You know, yeah, the they guy have to. scores the top score or whatever, gets this super valuable, unique thing, I guess. And I guess, I feel like the hope is gonna be that this NFT, unique NFT that this key ultimately unlocks, uh -huh. will just skyrocket in value, become the Charizard Pokemon card, essentially, of this realm. And it just feels like it's headed towards that, but nothing really that special. This, this reminds me of Beanie freaking, uh, what's his name? Peter Molyneux. It reminds me of Goddess when he just didn't explain anything and said, here's an app where you can tap away at this cube and the last person to tap and hit the center of the giant cube will win something transcendental. And it was just all bullshit. It was just basically a giant scam that because... 
Peter Molyneux, as always. No, this is a great idea because what you do is you get everybody to download this program and then you put a Bitcoin miner or like some sort of currency miner inside of the program and you have to have the program running all the time and it like powers up your character for the next run. Then you have that miner that sends back the stuff to everybody else's computer. That's what you actually do. Yeah, you farm their data, you steal all their stuff and then that's it. Uh, they have just announced the winner on their Twitter, some random 18-year-old with 2.1 million followers. Holy shit! And deliver on his promises, but in this case, it just feels like a very calculated scam where they understand exactly what they're doing, what exactly what they're promoting, and, uh, you know... The I don't think the guys that do Board Ape Yacht Club are stupid. ...vagueness of it all just, you know, keeps people curious and engaged, but... You know, the rewards might ultimately not be worth it. This feels like a, a Peter Molyneux concept. But at least the curiosity app that led to Goddess was free. You didn't lose anything by partaking in it. Well, you do lose time, but you don't lose anything material or financial. To participate in this Board Ape Yacht Club game, you're spending thousands of dollars yes. on these passes with different tiers, What's with inside different the benefits queue? and whatnot. Okay, that was a lot. This graph so you have something to reference. I thought they didn't like the roadmap the schedule FAQ. of this the vague things like, that are going to happen surrounding this game. Yeah. It's good that they have a, um, uh, you know, a website like this because, like, if you're dyslexic, you're going to have trouble typing this one in. I'm dyslexic. Yeah, I'd probably fuck it up the first time. So, like, that immediately just, like, cuts off 20% of people right there. Check every link you click to make sure Smart. you're it's yeah. almost time to literally go ape shit. Oh, I've been wanting to say that one for a while. See you in the sewer. So yeah, that's that's the video, Man. and that's kind of my basic explanation of what this is. Because I remember first time I watched this video, I couldn't comprehend what I was looking at, what what, what they were explaining. Really, I, I just couldn't comprehend it. There were so many just random dumb words being thrown around, and this whole system is just so convoluted, intentionally so. And uh, you've the got random dumb words are actually not random or dumb. They are intentionally weird and esoteric in a way to make it seem like the person who's investing into it is buying into something that is larger than their own mind. Numerous articles it's done like on PC Gamers here titled The Board Apes NFT is literally about chasing shit and all of what I just explained is kind of explained right here, but alongside that, the performance of this game is reported on here. The floor price for a sewer pass on OpenSea, the lowest price on auction, now stands at more than two Ethereum, which at the moment translates to nearly $3,100 in real money. Wow. That is the price of the ticket, essentially. To and, and keep in mind, that's only a tier one ticket, okay? That's a molten core, like, geared character. This guy might not even have, like, a uh, onslaught girdle at this point okay you're not talking about like bwl aq40 gear like this is the this is the lowest price point to just get you in and the minimum take in this game in this environment that price is rising quickly the floor price yesterday as of the publishing of this article was 1.49 Ethereum. Now, this article is almost a month old. If you go to OpenSea right now, you can uh -huh. see that numbers have changed with the sales volume and all these things having wow. changed over time. The floor right now seems to be at 2.25 Ethereum. And based on what the current price of Ethereum is, you know, the value of that. You saw will, one right there. Look at that, the, bro. That's a tier four. That one went for 4.4 Ethereum. Big fucking money. Not these tier one losers here, okay? You've got a big dick like fucking Brelshaza, Naxxramas, 40 man. Like that's 2 point, oh sorry, 4.4 .4 Ethereum. That's like a, it's like, it's like $10,000 or something like that. Current or price eight. of Ethereum is, you know, the value of that will vary, but it's in the thousands of dollars. Yes. If you don't own one of those freaking monkeys, that's the minimum you have to pay to get one of these passes that are being sold off by people who are able to gain access to mm -hmm. these passes by owning a Board Ape Yacht Club NFT. Now, so yeah. the publishing of the PC Gamer article, the total volume of sewer pass sales on OpenSea at this moment stood at 13329 So somebody spent $9,700 for a Tier 4 pass. There was, a, there was a real person who spent that much money for a pass to play this video game.
Ethereum, nearly $21 million. Now, in terms of owners, we're looking at 13,654 owners, 52% of which are unique owners. Mm -hmm. So... The people partaking in this, it seems to be in the thousands, which is not a whole lot, but they're all contributing a lot of money. They're all being whales, and so this venture is making Board Ape Yacht Club millions and millions of dollars. The highest of price course. paid for a single pass so far is 6.2 Ethereum, 9.7 or $9,700 for a Tier 4 pass. Just what a sucker, I say personally. The point of all this is... Imagine being a Diablo Immortal player and looking at this and being like, man, this is a lot cheaper. I should probably get into this instead. Well, frankly unclear to me same i i don't understand what all of this is building up towards i guess we'll get more details come february 15th two days from this recording of this video which is when the summoning is meant to happen whatever the hell that is and i'll keep you updated on just how much all of this evolves and just how this bizarre scam continues to unravel but until then we're kind of left in the dark as to where any of this is headed pc gamer is also scratching its head about the summoned power sources that can be utilized in future mini game sets to reach the evo 2 stage and beyond whatever the hell that means just again a bunch of words thrown out there that don't add up to anything substantial or anything tangible. Mm -hmm. Utility of the power sources, which may or may not be somehow connected to the horrific other side metaverse platform. That's the metaverse that Board Ape Yacht Club is making. Not long ago, we had freaking Snoop Dogg and Eminem perform. Oh my god, I forgot about this. Oh fuck, bro. I Ooh. God damn. Like, I can give them a little bit of a pass because, like, Snoop is, like, almost 60. He's, like, I know he's probably, like, somewhere in his, like, fucking 50s. Like, they probably don't understand this shit all that well. And somebody told them, like, ah, yeah, you should go do this. But, like, damn, man. Like, you got to get somebody else to tell you, like, they, they, they can give you better advice on this. Snoop is retiring. Eminem has too much money. Yeah. Yeah, they're ape NFTs in this metaverse. Here's kind of what that looked like for those who are curious. This is a video from five months ago. The likes to dislikes ratio already is not great. Uh -huh. But yeah, you can see just this. These are the character models that they used to do this concert. Wow. And I mean, it, it just look at this. Why would I want to watch this over just a live concert? Just footage of the artist just singing in live action format instead of whatever the hell this is. But anyway, back to the people. Well, this is what happens whenever you spend your whole life on the internet and you spend like four years convincing yourself that reality is only a simulation. You see game article, the utility of the power sources, which again may or may not be connected to other side, is this almost is irrelevant. Happens. It's about churning money. The number of sewer passes is limited, artificial scarcity, and power sources with high scores attached will be even rarer and in the world of NFTs that grants them the appearance of value. Players who want to sink oh, yeah. even more money into this can also purchase power-ups, again, basically microtransactions to aid them on their journeys through the sewers. They probably Turning baseless hype into money-sucking speculation seems to be the intent of all of this. And that's the thing. We're supposed to speculate about where all of this is headed because everything's kept so vague. We don't know what's spending thousands of dollars. It's smart for them to keep it vague because at the moment that they actually say what it is, it will lose value. Because nothing they can possibly announce will be better than what somebody could think up in their own head. To play this so-called video game will get us. And so that within itself is its own Goal speculation. Yeah. And what is yeah, with a lot of girls, like I, I know you guys might not like me saying this, but like I actually think it is a better business model for girls not to do nudes on OnlyFans. Because that way you can always farm people on the possibility of doing them in the future. People always wonder already a speculative market it's like nothing highlights further just how speculative and how unsafe and how uncertain all of this is than the fact that the game itself is speculative within a speculative economic environment there's another article here by ars technica titled the first board ape nft game costs 2300 dollars plus for three weeks of play that price by the way if i had known this was happening back then i would have maybe bought one to play the game because I think that, like, 100%, I could make a video on that and make that money back. Easily. Again, it's constantly fluctuating based on the floor price and Ethereum's price. 
but I've highlighted some of the key bits here, and there's another article that essentially echoes a lot of what PC Gamer already said. They explain here how sewer pass holders will be able to trade their pass for a mysterious power source NFT during the summoning, which starts on February 15th, and right. again two days from now. The quality of those power sources will apparently be tied to each sewer pass's relative position on the game's final leaderboard, with rarer traits, whatever those are, being associated with higher scores. The player at the very top will be the only one to get the ultimate power source, whatever that means. And these power sources that will carry on to future aspects of the roadmap of course. that will be able to be utilized in the future minigame sets to reach the Evo 2 stage and beyond, whatever that means. Again, nobody knows what where any of this is headed. But Ars Technica oh, puts do. it very clearly what this whole scam and scheme is ultimately about. What is important is that these NFTs have a strictly limited supply. Only a few thousand sewer passes will be made available to existing Board Ape Yacht Club members, and the power sources derived from the best Dookie Dash scores will be rarer still. Speculators are essentially betting that these NFTs or future NFTs generated from the current ones will eventually be in demand among other side users who will value whatever function they do have in Yuga's metaverse if and when it releases. And even if that intrinsic gameplay-based demand for these <laughs> NFTs never actually materializes, speculators can still hope to sell other speculators, greater fools, if you will, <laughs> who believe in the future value proposition. It's one giant gamble, like the stock market is, but this is far more speculative, far less regulated. It is ultimately yeah. just one giant Ponzi scheme. It is all just far removed from what truly makes a video game a game. There are gameplay mechanics here because there's an actual game that you have to play but the end goal is not to beat the game and then half credits to roll the and be satisfied score. that you went through this cool fictional experience like you, you could escape oh to God. and not be concerned with real world problems. This All of this ties to your money. It's about getting people hyped for something that they hope will become incredibly valuable. Well, this, I mean, like, no, the, what they're doing, they're doing the QAnon strat. They get people hyped for in two weeks, bro, everything's going to change in two weeks and then two weeks after that it's in in two weeks everything's going to change and then two weeks after that listen guys just wait two more weeks and everything guess what it's going to change coveted and we'll be able to make a lot of money off of the value that they hope the they're gambling coming. on uh, increasing and skyrocketing as this whole venture goes along. So yeah, I don't know. That's kind of everything you need to know about this whole Board Ape Yacht Club game. It's not really a uh -huh. game. Just be aware of it. Uh, figure to be, I don't know, interesting to talk about, oh, but also a way this. to caution people away from I think stuff this is like great. this. And as all of this develops, I'll keep you updated on how this goes and. Uh, whether there are nefarious elements about it to further discuss. But until then, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this Board Ape Yacht Club quote-unquote game. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. Well, well, well. A Bored Ape Yacht Club video. I Video game. I never expected to see this. Oh, my God. I'll link you guys the video so you can give it a like. Uh, dude, intro always makes me laugh. Yeah, I get it. The guy that won is a pro Fortnite player, Mongrel. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, that's a really good idea. So that way they can monetize and, like, promote the winning even more through him. So, yeah, there were probably people that got higher scores than him. But they might have just taken those people off the listing because they wouldn't be able to benefit as much. Yeah, that's a good idea. A